Hey everyone, welcome back to Brown Coat Nerd. Today we've got part two in the Sega Saga upgrades. I'm not really having any issues with the upgrades. It just kind of sounds like it when I say Sega Saga, Sega 12 upgrades, which actually this is a Lynx 12, which is a faithful Chinese copy or clone of the said Sega Saga 12. Um, now, I did do a kind of initial impressions and overview of the Lynx 12, so if you're curious about that, I've got a video out there. Um, and most of the upgrades for this are going to carry over between the Sega and the Lynx 12, and any other kind of copy of the Kalashnikov uh, USA, their 12-gauge shotgun is a copy of the Sega. So a lot of these parts are going to be interchangeable. Do double-check, though, um, to make sure, because not all of them are interchangeable. Um, but then we have the tri billet tri rail here from Carolina Shooter Supply. And today we will have the video on the Carolina Shooter Supply performance gas plug regulator. Um, now I will say, like I was just talking about how not all these parts are interchangeable. Carolina Shooter Supply has their website set up pretty well where they have a section specifically links. Um, so you know that all the parts will fit. I did not find the gas plug regulator um, via the Lynx listing. Um, I actually just kind of did a separate search for it and found it. So I'm assuming this is actually in the Sega category. Um, and it fits in there just fine. Um, like I said in my first video for this, unfortunately I have not had a chance to shoot it yet. Um, but everything appears as though it's, it's going to work um, perfectly fine. And I've seen other videos of people upgrading the uh, Lynx 12 gas plug regulator with ones for the Sega Saga. So I'm not sure why it's listed like that on Carolina Shooter Supply. It is just in case you weren't looking for it and you're like, oh no, it's out of, out of stock. Um, just do a general search for the gas plug regulator. Um, this runs doo -doo -doo, 36 bucks, so it's pretty cheap. And in reality, I don't really need it, I think. The original Sega Sagas came with a basically two position gas plug. Um, these links actually come with a four position, so you have a benefit there. And like I said, the Carolina Shooter Supply one is a six position. Um, now, why would I do that? Well, first off, it's 36 bucks, so it's like, you know, it's not a big investment there at all. The other thing that I actually honestly really like about these is these gas plugs here, they stick out quite a bit more. So if I am out there in the field and it's cold as hell and I'm needing to adjust the gas block here, like this little thin guy can be possibly kind of a pain in the butt. With this handguard, it's actually easier to get to with the original handguard, which looked like your standard Sega Saga handguard. Um, this kind of came up a little bit further. And so not much of that plunger was actually exposed. So simply switching to this handguard, I mean, I can, I don't even need a tool, I don't think. Oh, well, I don't know. I can, so that makes it much simpler, but still, once again, 36 bucks. This one just sticks out more, got gloves on or something. It's going to be a lot easier to change them out. Now, let me wipe this down real quick. One thing that I found that was interesting. Oh, and then once again, other reasons for getting that plug. Um, six positions is better than four. Um, that's not a dirty joke, I promise. Um... But once again, if I should run into issues, I do have more options there. And once again, for the price point, it's a little bit easier to grab onto. It looks a little cooler. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's like, what do you have to lose? So before I get into the interesting thing here, I guess, um, the settings on this gas plug that came along with it, in case you're curious. Um, and also, this kind of goes back to my questions of the initial overview of this gun as to exactly when you'd use the gas shutoff. Rather, you got some low brass stuff that you just want to manually operate so you don't have to worry about it jamming up the gun because it's not going to cycle or it's for the high brass stuff where the recoil is kind of going to do the work for you so we have our answer here setting one which is going to be our shutoff oh these do not come with the color filled letters they're marked letters on there which once again is a lot better than the just different sized holes on the original links um, sorry for the ugly bruise underneath the thumbnail there. Um, so to begin with, the letters I prefer. And then I was like, it just makes sense to color fill them. So I did do that. If you guys are curious, it's super easy. I see people like, I don't want to get a toothpick and try to paint. No, here's what you do. 
you read your girlfriend's, uh, you know, beauty supply drop in the bathroom, right? You find, hopefully she has non-acetone fingernail polish. You're probably going to end up going out and buying non-acetone fingernail polish. If you find something that says acetone fingernail polish, no, stop. Do not do that. You will screw up the finish. You need non-acetone fingernail polish. Go ahead, say it out loud three times to remember non-acetone fingernail polish. That's the key. Then you need to find some fingernail polish in the case here, just white. And you just go gloop, gloop. And just paint over it, let it dry. And I'll do like two coats. I never mess with more than two coats. And then you take that non-acetone nail polish, non-acetone nail polish, and get a rag wet with it. And just slightly, you don't even need to rub hard. And at first, nothing's going to happen and you're going to freak out. And you're like, that brown coat on YouTube's a dickhead. Now I got freaking nail polish all over. Sorry for the language. Um, but just keep going. It's going gonna, it's gonna to break free, and it's going to start rubbing away, and you're going to start seeing the number magically appear underneath. And it's going to clean up all the nail polish on top, leaving the nail polish down in the groove. I do need to clean it up a little bit better. See, I got some on the side here. Um, but it's as easy as that. And it's 100% reversible. If you decide you don't like it, just get a rag just sopping with non-acetone fingernail polish, and just you know lay it on there, let it soak in real good. It'll come off. So... That went on way too long. Guys, plug settings. Where the hell am I? Okay. So setting one, which is our complete off position here. The direction say is normally used for all three inch shells and some heavy two and three quarter shells. So there's our answer on the gas shut off. It's, it's for the heavy load stuff. I guess theoretically, if you got some like really crappy low brass stuff and it's not even cycling on the biggest setting... You could switch it to sh shut off and use it manually operate. You don't have to worry about jamming up. So there's some just food for thought, I guess. We'll go ahead and run through these. Then it says setting two and three are normally used for heavy two and three quarter inch buckshot slugs. Settings four and five are normally used for two and three quarter inch high brass bird shot hunting loads. Sorry, I got a little belchy there. And then last but not least, setting six allows the most gas into the system and is normally used for low brass shells. Now that's the reason most people get these plugs is because they want to run the really cheap shotgun ammo. You know, just go out to the field, have fun. I'm going to be shooting probably practically exclusively slugs through this thing. It's I absolutely love shooting 12-gauge slugs out of my other old Chinese shotgun, the Savage Stevens. Like, I didn't know I would like shotguns that much. I, I bought it because I was like, oh, I'll get a shotgun in the collection. It's pump action. It's cool. It was affordable. And then the slugs, I was like, yippee ki -yay, right? And so then I was like, well, now I need a semi-auto one that I can shoot slugs in. So got rid of that, got this. But the interesting thing. The largest gas setting on the Lynx 12 compared to the largest gas setting on our CSS performance. There is a difference there. So if you are one of those people that's going to want to just buy the cheapest ammo, see like the second largest setting here still looks like it's a little bigger than the largest setting on this guy. Now I'm trying to look at like how deep it's cut. You know, there might be other factors here than just looking at top, but that's pretty clear night and day. Um, if you are wanting to do one of the, uh, if, you're, if you're looking to shoot low brass stuff in it, Keep that in mind. Now, there's other things to do if you are planning on shooting um, low brass. Uh, there's a little puck in here. I didn't really want to get it out because I'm oily, so I haven't completely wiped this gun um, down since getting it out of the box. But there's a little cup and piston puck in there. And Carolina Shooter Supply does sell a quote-unquote like upgrade, high-performance one. And from what I've seen, the idea that it's, it's a tighter fit and they're then the uh, stock one. And so it's, it's allowing less gas to escape past it without pushing it forward. So it's a tighter fit. So it's, it's utilizing that gas more. So you might want to look into one of those. Once again, I think those are under 40 bucks. It's one thing I thought about, but I was like, I, I'm going to be shooting slugs. I really don't need it. You know, I don't really even need that thing, but it does add some nice little benefits there. So if you're going to be shooting the real weak loads, look into that additional puck. And then they also sell springs, um, softer springs. 
Um, so you might also want to change up the springs there. Um, if I were you, I would just do, you know, one thing at a time. And once again, all the parts are pretty cheap and affordable. So if you just want to get them all, you're, you're not going to be really losing any money there. So I did want to point that out. I was kind of surprised I expected the largest setting on here to match that of the original one. You can see how much more it sticks out. Once again, with this uh, handguard on there, it's not that big of an issue. Well, it looks kind of cool, right? I dig it. So, all right, guys, that's my uh, overview of the, what's our full name here? The Carolina Shooter Supply Performance Gas Plug Regulator. Um, and I will just let you know, um, if you have the Sega 12, the 20, or the 410 version, it looks like it all uses the exact same gas plug regulator part there. So there you guys go. This was part two. We will have part three coming out here shortly on the um, pistol grip and buttstock. Uh, the buttstock I have on there is just kind of, uh, I had it, so I put it on there. But it's working, I think. I, it's, it's comfortable. When I say it's working, I mean it's, it's comfortable. Um, and then eventually, we'll have, what did it, where are we at? Part four will be on the, uh, the flash hider. Can't get that sneaking thread protector and to be honest i haven't tried since i first did my very first video on this so there you guys go thank you for watching if you like this or you want to keep up to date with the upgrades that we'll be doing on the lynx 12 or sega saga or any of those clone shotguns um be sure to subscribe to my video so you don't miss out on those thank you guys for watching stay shiny and uh yeah i ran out of stuff to say bye